Today we're going to be talking about, which is probably my favorite feature within QuickBooks Online, and that is the automatic bank feeds. And they're called automatic bank feeds. Really, you can connect many accounts to this. Um, you can connect checking accounts, savings accounts, credit cards, loan accounts, uh, PayPal. Um, there's plenty more. The first step with this is making sure that, that the associated account is an account in your chart of accounts within your QuickBooks Online file. Um, so if the, if the associated account, whether it's again, a bank or a credit card is already in your chart of accounts and you can skip ahead in this video, cause the first thing we're going to be doing is creating that account. Um, and I'll put a time card down in the description on where you can go in the video. But, um, if you don't have the account set up as a chart of account in your file, then, um, I can go ahead and show you now how to, how to do that. So, um, in order to access that, if you go to the gear icon here in the top, right, and then under settings, there's going to be a chart of account option. You can go ahead and click that and then you can go ahead and hit new here. And so the first one we're going to be creating is going to be a bank and it's going to be a checking account. So usually for tracking purposes, I just put the last four of the checking or credit card account right here is a very important step. So this is essentially creating a opening balance on this account. And you want to make sure that this is accurate for future reconciliations. So you're going to want to know when you want to start tracking tra these transactions in QuickBooks Online. And you, you're going to want to have your bank statement available for, uh, to put in the accurate information. So let's say, for example, it's middle of May right now. And let's say we want to bring in all the transactions for the, all, for the whole year right now is 2020. So um, you're going to want to look at your bank statement for December of 2019. And um, you're going to want to see the statement ending balance as well as the statement ending date. It's always, always going to be a clean December 31st cutoff. Um, sometimes it might end on like December 28th, for example. But in this particular case, it's a clean one. So we're going to do um, 1231. And then enter the associated ending balance. And again, this information is all found on the, uh, on the bank statement. So we can go ahead and um, save and close this. And then we're also going to be doing a, a credit card as well. So rather than bank here, we're going to hit the down arrow and then click credit card. And again, we're going to put the last four of the credit card. And again, we're going to want to choose the opening balance for this. Uh, and again, we're going to track for the entire year of 2020. And in this particular case, we looked at my December statement for this credit card, and it actually ends on December 24th. Look at the uh, ending statement date and then the account balance. And then again, save and close that. So now we have in our chart of accounts, the two accounts that we're going to be connecting today, and that's going to be the checking account as well as the credit card. So once you have these accounts set up in our chart of accounts, we can go ahead and set up those automatic bank feeds. And the way to do that on the left column here, you're going to see um, the banking option. So you can go ahead and click that. And then here you're going to be prompted to uh, enter the name of the, uh, of the, either the bank or credit card company. So we can go ahead and start that now. And then what it's going to essentially ask you to do is sign in using your banks or credit cards, username, associated username and password. And once you have that information inputted, you can go ahead and hit connect. And then once it's connected, it'll bring you to this screen. Um, one thing to keep in mind here. So let's say you have one um, bank or company and you have multiple associated accounts with that company. Let's say you have maybe a business and personal checking account, a business savings account, business credit card, personal credit card. Um, you can pick and choose using that one login which accounts you want to uh, bring into QuickBooks Online and to which accounts are associated with your chart of accounts. Um, in this particular case, we have one account and it's going to be that checking account that we created in the chart of accounts. Now here is where you will choose how far back you wanna bring in transactions. Um, sometimes it depends bank to bank how many transactions you have. And we'll go into this when we do the credit card as well. Sometimes you can only go back 90 days. Sometimes you can do a full year. In this particular case, we can do a full year. So we're going to bring all transactions in starting from that statement end date, which is December 31st. We can go ahead and hit connect here. 
Okay, and now as you can see, um, we have the associated account connected within QuickBooks Online. It's pulled the transactions for the uh, for the whole year here. And um, and if you have any sort of duplicates or if you look at your bank statement and there's stuff that's already been reconciled, let's say for example, that we already reconciled for December 3rd, these two December 31st transactions, we can go ahead and exclude those. And now we're going to set up that second account, which is the uh, that credit card account. So again, under the banking screen, which is where we're at here, you can go ahead and hit add account. And then this particular one is Capital One. And again, it'll prompt you to uh, enter your associated username and password. You can uh, choose the down arrow here and then select the associated credit card which we created, which is in our chart of accounts. So we can go ahead and do the max available transactions, which I'll show you how we can bring in the remaining transactions for the re uh, remainder of the year. So we can go ahead and connect here. Perfect. Okay, so now as you can see, we have transactions going to uh, March 3rd here. And so, and what we really want is transactions dating back to that December 24th, which is the, um, the last statement that we reconciled back in December because we want to do the whole 2020 year. So the way to do that is to go into actually your bank or credit card account and their website and then download those remaining transactions and then import them into QuickBooks Online. And I can show you how to do that now. So for Capital One specifically, um, if you go to your transactions, there's a download option here. You can select your file type. Um, ideally, you would want QBO, but you can also use a CSV file, for example. So it looks like Capital One does have a QBO option, which is perfect. Some banks or credit cards have to go month by month. In this particular case, we can do a range. And again, we want to bring in those transactions from the uh, December 24th date, because again, that was the statement ending date. And then you want to go in. So again, we have transactions from this uh, February 3rd. Bring transactions to uh, March 2nd. So now we can go ahead and hit export. We'll see that that has been downloaded. So we can go back now into our QuickBooks. And what you're, what you're going to want to do is go to the associated account, which in this case is the credit card. And then next to update, there's a down arrow right here you can select. And then do a file upload. And then we can go ahead and this point browse and find that transaction that we just downloaded. You can open that and then hit next here. And then here's where we can select that, uh, that credit card again and hit next again. You can see we now have all the transactions dating back to that December 24th statement ending date. So now once you're at this stage, um, we were able to bring in uh, past transactions in bulk. Um, and also in the future, every transaction that is made on either this uh, bank account or credit card will automatically be brought into QuickBooks Online. So um, I think this is a really great feature and can set you up for success.